Hello all. Now let's put your chapter start here. Export and import policy of India. So before learning what is exim policy of India, we need to understand what is foreign trade or what is international trade. It is simply a trade between two or more countries. As in this foreign trade, there will be two or more countries. It will be also dealing with different currencies, different laws, different rules, different regulations. And moreover, this is a complex one. And foreign trade of country consists of import and export of goods and services. And this import and export of goods and services is known as exchange policy. And here are some need and import importance of foreign trade. If a nation or if a business is having a foreign trade, it will be giving a benefit of division of labor and specialization for the nation. Second one is about resources. Optimum allocation and optimum utilization of resources can be done through this foreign trade. Next one is about equality of prices. Foreign trade always helps to keep the demand and supply factors in a stable position. If demand and supply is in a stable position, price will be stabilized. Fourth one is multiple choices. Consumer will be getting multiple choice of av availability of products if foreign trade is taking off. Next one is about generate employment opportunities. Our business is expanding to another nation. Obviously, it will be providing employment opportunities. Next one is raising standard of living and helps for economic development. If you are doing foreign trade, more money will be coming to our nation and it will help for economic development. Assistance during calamities. If our nation is uh, doing a foreign trade between another nation, in our nation, some calamities has happened. That nation where we are doing foreign trade, they will be obviously helping us during these times. So it is, you know, it is meant on this eighth point that is assistance during calamities. Ninth one is maintain BOP position, balance of payment. Balance of payment is uh, something related to export and import, right? So maintaining a BOP position will be done through this foreign trade. And if you are doing a foreign trade, Obviously, it will give goodwill to our nation and also we can earn more foreign exchange. And the last one is promote world peace. And its procedures, export import procedures. First one, we need to obtain an import export code, IEC, and want to register with GST and Central Excise Authority. Next one is to register with Export Promotion Organization. And are concluding an export deal. Export finance should be arranged and for procuring or manufacturing of goods. After arranging export finance, we should we should procure or we should manufacture goods. Pre-ship inspection should be done and central excise clearance on goods for exports. If we need to export, we need central excise clearance on that goods which should be exported and export of goods under bond. Tenth one is packaging, marking and labeling of goods. This goods should be packed, marked and labeled according to the export policies. And eleventh one is appointment of clearing and forwarding agents. We should appoint a clearing and forwarding agent for this exports. Arranging cargo insurance. We will be exporting the thing through ship or etc. So there, there should be cargo insurance for that goods which are exported. Thirteenth one is booking shipping space. We should book a shipping space. The cargo, the cargo, the, that means the exported goods should be transformed, uh, sorry, trans, transported from one place to another. So there should be a medium for transportation and it is ship we are using. So for that, we need a space for uh, exporting these goods in ship. So it's about booking. And fourteenth one is dispatch of goods to port. We should dispatch that particular exporting goods to port and there is port procedures and customs clearance for our particular exporting goods. And after that, dispatch of documents to the exporter and sending shipping advice. 18th one is presentation of documents at the negotiating bank. These documents should be presented on negotiated bank. And last, claiming export incentives. At last, we can claim export incentives. There are 19 steps or 19 procedures which should be followed for exporting or exporting or importing procedures and this should be done at any cost.
and next one is on foreign trade of india foreign trade of india foreign trade policy of india includes all imports and exports to and from india all the exports to india all the exports from india or or imports if the imports is coming to india or we are importing from another nation everything should be included in this foreign trade policy and at the central level this foreign trade or export and imports are managed or administered by ministry of commerce and industry before liberalization there were there were high tariff rates for everything and quantitative restrictions were there but after this uh, 1991 economic liberalization our nation became more friendly to this uh, rates and quantitative restrictions etc and coming to foreign trade policy of india 2015 20 it was introduced uh, announced on 2015 20 ministry of commerce and industry on 1st april 2015 and it is for the period of 2015 to 2020 earlier this was known as exim policy and nowadays it is known as foreign trade policies okay and our government has introduced this foreign trade policy for increasing the exports of goods and services okay our nation's aim for this foreign trade policy is to ex- increase the export of our nation and also for generating employment opportunity likewise we need our nation to be value added nation increase value addition in the country was also a reason behind this foreign trade policies and the government through the implementation of the policy seeks to develop the manufacturing and service sector also the the government is uh, seeking to develop the manufacturing and service sector of our nation too so basically this foreign trade policy of india is focused on increasing of exporting goods and generating employment and regulations this ftp policy which means foreign trade policy is a guideline which is relating to all the imports and exports of our nation and it is prepared for 5 years that is 2015 to 2020 and here are some highlights of this foreign trade policy 2015-20 first one is simplification and merger of reward system export from india scheme m e i s merchandise exports from india scheme second one is service exports from india scheme third one is special economic zone fourth one is duty credit slips to be freely transferable and usable for payment of customs duty excise duty and service duty service tax so duty credit slips means it is freely transfer, transferable for uh, paying this excise duty service tax and customs duty so more restrictions has been removed fifth one is about status holder and here are some five four points relating to this status holder first one is business leaders are treated as status holder and given special status and privilege in order to reduce their transaction cost and time this business le- leaders who are involving this export and import they will be getting a status special status as status holder they will be getting a privilege so that they can reduce their transaction cost and time second one is that export houses has been classified into 1 2 3 4 and 5 star export houses it has been classified into 5 star export houses so each will be channelized to through proper way and c is the criteria for export performance to a status holder have been changed from rupees to us dollar earnings so our status holders a criteria has been changed from rupees to us dollar earnings for more ec com- uh, communication and d approved exporter scheme self certification by self status holder are allowed to satisfy certify their manufactured goods as originating from india for clearing preferential treatment in various zones from various zones if our goods are originating from india this business holder will be getting a status holder they they will be uh, easily approved through the system approved exporter system there will be a self certification by status holder that these product are manufactured or origin from india and this is treated as a preferential trade treat, uh, preferential right for them from if the, it is exported through various special economic zone or uh, export processing zone etc and next one is boost to make in 
India. We know that Make in India is one of the proud project of our nation. So reduced export obligation for domestic procurement under EPCG export promotion capital goods scheme. If they are, there will be export uh, obligation reduced. Uh, more laws and regulation will be reduced in case of the product is originating from India. And higher levels of rewards will be given for merchandise export from India scheme. If they are doing MEIS scheme, they will be getting more rewards. C is about trade facilitation and ease of doing business. Paperless trade has been introduced and also online interministerial consultation is available for everyone. And the procedure and process digitization of e-commerce, etc. were simplified. So easy activities can be done. Easily activities can be done. And 11th one is about e-governance. We all know what is e-governance. And other new initiatives. There are some new initiatives for EOUs. EOU means export-oriented units and also electronics, hardware, technology parks. New initiatives will be were allowed and um, share infrastructure facilities among themselves has been introduced. Also, they are uh, helping, they are facilitated to set up a warehouse near the port of export so they can keep their goods at there. And inter-unit transfer of goods and services has been also allowed. So these are the new initiatives. First one is about sharing infrastructure facilities. Second one is about setting up a warehouse. And third one is about inter-unit transfer that has been allowed. And thirteenth one is facilitating and encouraging export of dual-use items. Fourteenth one is encouraging the facilitating export of defense good. E-commerce exports various exemptions are given. These are some highlights, okay? These are sim some simple points. E-commerce exports various that we have already discussed. Uh, eight, sixteenth one, duty exemption given in certain cases. In certain cases, certain duties have been given. Additional ports were allowed for export and import. Duty-free preference schemes were introduced. Quality complaints and trade disputes. A committee is being constituted to tackle the issue. If there, there will be many problems relating to export and import and there will be a grievance system for them to solve their problems. And Vishakapatanam and Pimavaram are added as towns of export excellence. And there are already 33 towns and more two towns has been also introduced. So these are the uh, schemes or important highlights of foreign trade policy 2015 and 20. And regarding the regulation of foreign trade, the Director General of Foreign Trade is the agency responsible for the execution of FTP in India. We know that there is foreign trade policy in India and it is administrated by Ministry of Commerce and Industry in a central level. And those who are responsible for the execution of this foreign trade policy is Director General of Foreign Trade and they will be having uh, regional offices across the country and it is headquarters at New Delhi and its functions entrust with the responsibility of implementing the FTP. They are responsible for the implementation or the execution of foreign trade policy and they are the licensing authority for export and imports. They can promote, pro, not promote, prohibit, restrict and regulate exports and imports. They are the um, persons who can uh, prohibit or restrict or regulate exports and imports. They issue notifications, public notice, circulars, etc. And they also grant a 10-digit importer-exporter license. And they introduce different schemes from time to time regarding trade benefits throughout the country. So the functions are, they are the responsible one to implement the FTP and they are the persons who are giving license uh, to this export and import. And they are the one who, are, who is regulating or restricting export and imports. They also provide information, notifications, etc. relating export and import. Also, they grant a 10-digit number, identity number for exporter, and importer that is importer exporter license and last one is they uh, introduce different schemes regarding this foreign trade throughout throughout the year uh, throughout uh, our country 